Hey, let's make a movie. Sure. Let's spin the wheel. Well, let's make a movie. But, but, Larry boy. But people like pirates. But don't worry, when Marvel's The Avengers comes out, we'll have something for Larry Boy. Wow, talk about opportunists. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been plenty of times before where VeggieTales has done parodies of pop culture and media. We had a Gilligan's Island parody, a Star Trek parody, and even a Tim Burton's Batman parody. The list goes on. But after Big Idea's bankruptcy, the studio would struggle for relevancy. While there were a few gems post-bankruptcy, there were other episodes that are either weird or are trying to capitalize on pop culture. So let's add another pop cultural cash into the list. Pirates who don't do anything. Even though the silly song of the same name has been around since the 90s, first heard in the video a very silly sing-along, Phil and company were able to spin a movie from that particular silly song. And that pulls them into an adventure that they didn't see coming at all, and it's a real adventure where they'll have to be real pirates and see if they can become real heroes. While I wouldn't mind entertaining this concept, and while it sounds great on paper, the execution is... how would you describe it? I don't know. But is this a cinematic disaster as Rotten Tomatoes dictates? After all, the animation is serviceable, and the instrumental music is phenomenal. However, as you watch this film from start to finish, you'll notice that the story isn't too good. Aside from injecting so many Disney movie tropes in the story, you'll notice similarities to other films. In other words, imagine taking some of the plot points from, say, Three Amigos and Galaxy Quest and watch any of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies for like an hour 30. I think that's the runtime for this movie. So that's basically the movie right here. Whether those were Phil Vischer's intentions or not, you're gonna see plenty of times where you'll say, hey, isn't that a plot point from so-and-so? Or where have I seen this plot before? Or wasn't this from a certain movie? Now, I actually got to see this movie in theaters back in 2008. Too bad I didn't get to save money on it with this free ticket coupon. And there's a fan club? Just so you know, that's not Madame Blueberry. In fact, my introduction to the Jonah movie was their promotion with Applebee's. But with the Pirates movie, my viewing of that movie as a 14-year-old consisted of a full house, with the majority of moviegoers being kids. And I was lucky enough to go to this movie by myself. No regrets. Anywho, let's go back in time and open with people sword fighting in the good old 17th century. Well, looks like this guy missed out on the Prince Eric look-alike contest because he's fighting the bad guys. By the way, this is supposed to be Prince Alexander of Monteria, which is not a real country because it's nowhere on the world map. Or maybe I missed it, I don't know. Simple Google search, you guys. Anyway, let me introduce you to the villain, Robert the Terrible. <laughs> Robert! And here's your first problem. The generics of this movie hit you hard. And it only gets worse over time when we learn about Robert's intentions in trying to take the royal children hostage. Trust me, his motives are laughable. Well, the bad guys aren't able to find the princess on board. Okay, hold on. You see this guy? This guy looks like a Muppet. But that's not important. What is important is that he only has a couple of lines in this movie. Nothing else. She's not on board, sir. Cutlass. This man serves no purpose, miss. Well, you got that right. Anyway, back to this guy. While I like his character design, seeing that he's some form of inventor, the story that he's in, it's only going to bring him down. And it's sad. We learn that Princess Eloise and her butler Alfred... Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, 
her butler, Willery, they were able to hide from the bad guys. And then they consult a help seeker. The situation is dire. Please bring back... The army! The navy! Heroes! You know, Willery's suggestions make better sense. But whatever, let's get that title card. Okay, so here we're introduced to our main characters. Now, let me just cut to the chase here. Pa Grape can't please his family for some reason. Dang, even his own children look down on him. Larry can't impress his girlfriend because he's a walking caution tape, meaning that he's scared of pretty much anything and everything. Pretty much the poster child for Dr. Flurry's easiest fear dar victim before Junior took that title. And Mr. Lunt can't impress his girlfriend because he's just lazy. In fact, he's so lazy that he sends out his little robot to give her a flower. Boom! Nailed all the cliches. By the way, I'm calling them Paw Grape, Larry, and Mr. Lunt because they're Paw Grape, Larry, and Mr. Lunt. Oh, I'm sorry. We suddenly get this scene where some crazy guy spews out prophecy. Maybe I should let the man speak. Though you will stumble, the crab will show you the light. When adversity devours you, a lever will set you free. Help will come from above in the shape of a donkey. Okay, so I'm trying to write all this down. Uh, I think I got some of it. I don't know. But then again, what kid would even understand that garbage? Not surprisingly, the guys misinterpret the message, believing that they would get starring roles in the pirate show. Not sponsored by Game Grumps. Not surprisingly, the audition doesn't go well. And not surprisingly, the trio gets fired for destroying the theater, which managed to rebuild itself by the time they come back from their time travel whatever. But I'm getting ahead of myself, folks. Basically, no surprises here. By the way, what's the name of this movie again? Oh, the pirates who don't do anything! <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jimmy, for reminding us what this movie is called. As if to tell us that this movie is starting to become garbage, we get the help seeker. Well, it could be something valuable, like a Russian satellite. Or yeah, let me hold this thing and stick my face in it like a moron. So they press a button, and a rowboat appears. Now, what if I told you that these guys time travel in a rowboat thanks to the Help Seeker? By the way, how is the Help Seeker able to go from the oceans of the 17th century to a modern-day dump truck? Because at the very beginning, the Help Seeker rolls itself into the ocean, and somehow it manages to find our guys in an alley from a garbage truck? I mean, there's supposed to be, like, some kind of time warp or vortex or something. I mean, they don't even show time warp transitions or vortex transitions. A lot of that stuff is easy to find, like, for free online. I mean, check out this one. So unless this movie is dealing with two different worlds or dimensions, this shouldn't be possible. I don't even know if this movie even understands the basics of time travel. Why is there time travel in this movie? But it gets worse later on. So obviously, they get sent back in time, again no time warp or vortex, and they come across Princess Eloise. Good lord, the enthusiasm from this girl seeing these guys is like her discovering that Barney the dinosaur is real. I'm just waiting for her to start foaming in the mouth from all that excitement. We've been waiting for you! Quickly, come up! So she tells these guys about her kingdom being in danger, and that her brother's being kidnapped, and that her father the king is away. For some reason. Yeah, we never get to know why the king of Materia went away. They just say that he's away. He's gone on business. What kind of business? What's he doing? You would think that the father would at least tell his kids where he's going. Heck, even the kids don't even know where their father is. Because in a later scene, one of the kids is like, Our father didn't say where he's going, but I would give my own life before I even tell you, if he knew. When is the king returning? He didn't say. 
but even if he had, I'd give my own life before I'd tell you. So even the kids don't know where their father's at. You would think that the father would at least tell his kids where he's going. But then again, that's what the evil uncle wants to know. So, yeah, another plot hole. So the boys decide to play along with this whole thing because, yeah, their normal lives suck, but living a lie is cool. The spies are in place, sir. Yeah, very intense. You're basically a Muppet. The plot holes are in place, miss. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Hello! Perhaps you don't know who you're dealing with. This be one-eyed Louis. Yeah, shut up. Take your meds! We get a scene with Robert showing Alexander his secret lair. Keep in mind, after this scene, it'll be a while before we see them again. You know, for a villain with a lot of ambition, you would think the movie would add to that. My father will send help. I would enjoy that. All are welcome. Yep, just like my family. If they wanted to be in a Larry Boy Fanatic video, then they're more than welcome. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Pa Grape and Eloise have small talk. While I appreciate this bit of chemistry between the two, there's this one point where Eloise says this. He's a wonderful king. Wise, brave, but he always finds time for me. His little Eloise. Again, you would think the father would care enough to let his kids know where he's going, and that Robert is such a threat to the kingdom. So why isn't he here now? Yeah, we're starting to see a bigger problem here, but we'll get back to that soon enough. The heroes find an inn where Eloise... Ah, uh, now you're just asking to be snatched up by Robert's cronies. Thank you, we need a musical number. By the way, you'll notice that there are not as many musical numbers here. In fact, there are more musical numbers in Jonah than this movie. Which is strange, because that's what you're known for, VeggieTales. I mean, come on. Wouldn't you want this movie to be a lot more wholesome and entertaining? So they learn that the Cutlass belongs to Robert the Terrible, surprise, surprise. And you would think Eloise would know that already, since the sword fight at the beginning was causing quite a ruckus to where she and her butler had to hide. She could have heard her uncle speak at some point. Or maybe she was wearing noise-canceling headphones at the time. But then again, her father failed to tell his kids where he was going, so I doubt that he tells them about their evil uncle and what all he's about. By the way, you just know the goal of protecting the princess is doomed to fail, because one of Robert's spies... <laughs> plus, the bartender recognized her too... So let's call off this adventure. It's getting way too serious for our heroes. But Eloise convinces them to stay. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, no, that's not what happened. She says this. My father brought you here for a reason, and your work here is not done. Okay, so you mean to tell me that these three guys, guys with families, guys with relationships, Guys with lives to live with or without a job. You mean to tell me that they can't return home until their work as heroes is done? That means dealing with cutthroat pirates, intense working conditions, and a tyrant who's hell-bent on killing anyone who stands in his way, and they can't return home until their job is done? Great, where do I sign up? Because obviously we're not dealing with a sociopath here. He always makes time for his little Eloise, huh? That's because he's been a freaking painting this whole time. <laughs> Plot twist. Uh, Daddy, can you pass the salt? I'll take that as a yes. So, uh, how is your father? The painting. 
Yeah, boys, he sure has a colorful personality. <laughs> so, um, how do we get out of a sticky one? I know. Create a lazy montage with a bunch of lazy people. While this song is a bit catchy, I kind of like the Jolly Joe song better. Where's that light switch? There we go. The heroes argue about whether this adventure is even worth it or not. Yeah, it's kind of like saying, was this movie even worth it or not? With Larry Boy being a fan favorite in the VeggieTales franchise, you would think that big idea would make a feature film about him. But no, a generic pirate adventure mixed with a lot of Disney cliches takes the cake. They go inside a cave where they find the clues to Robert's fortress. Now, to be honest, this is the best track in the soundtrack. It's called Cave Medley. In fact, the instrumentals in this movie are phenomenal. I definitely give props to Kurt Heineke. This had to be one of his best works as a composer. Because the music has that ambience to help tell this movie's story. Even though the story is oozing with generic snot. Regardless, I like the instrumental score. As for the songs sung in this movie, they're hit or miss. Oh, I'm sorry. While I was describing the music, Mr. Lunt has apparently given up. And then the heroes see that the princess's ship has been hijacked. Oh my god, what else can go wrong? When the ball blinks, our work is done and we can go home. Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to see your kids? Wait, wait, um, one dilemma at a time, folks? Alright, so we're getting closer to the biggest problem of the movie. But in the meantime, we have to add this next plot point to the list of issues that this movie has. So the help sinker is blinking, indicating that it's time to go home. However, it's blinking at the very moment that the princess is being kidnapped. While this wouldn't be a big deal now, this plot point is going to be huge later on in the movie. I promise you. So Paul Grave and Larry decide to keep going. Meanwhile, Mr. Lunt is being chased by... these things? <laughs> Don't ask me why that is. To me, they're just Cheetos puffs. Mr. Lunt meets a crab, which shows him a photo of him and his girlfriend. This has him realize that he has something worth coming home to, and he climbs his way out of the cave. Incorporated. What do you want, Robert? <laughs> Robert! Right, we get another scene with Robert. Yeah, almost an hour into the film, he goes on a rant, saying why he wants to be king. I want the throne, the crown! When the crown is mine, I can once again enjoy the benefits of royalty. Hmm. Sounds familiar. I've talked about how the Bad Apple is a great villain in the Larry Boy multiverse. She has somewhat of a good backstory through her ancestry, trying to take over Bumlingburg with temptation. She had her great uncle Ephraim, who tried to take over Bumlingburg when it was in its settlement years. And then centuries later, the Bad Apple arrives, tries to take over Bumleyburg, but fails. While some of what the Bad Apple says or does may seem cliché, her uniqueness outshines the clichés. Her mechanical spider legs, her ability to create portals, and her seductive nature makes her an interesting character. But with Robert, he might look appealing but his backstory is every single jealous brother wants to take the throne story that you ever heard in your life. In other words, this movie chooses to suck off as many Disney tropes as possible, including the Lion King. What a waste of potential. 
Anyways, the children have two hours to fess up or die. Who can help us now? Oh my god! We don't even have time to take in what just happened. A murderous uncle? Who cares? Let's have Larry sing a silly song. Anyway, they land at the island of walking rocks. And guess what? There are literal walking rocks. Oh, and look who it is. Mr. Lunt actually swam for miles. My god, he's still going. Well, you managed to get these people to laugh. As a thank you for entertaining his children, the rock monster helps the guys get through the clapping pass. Oh, the clapping pass. Yep, that's the one person who actually enjoyed this movie. They're the ones clapping right now. What was that Rotten Tomatoes score again? Anyways, take this. Oh no, a sea monster! Quick, someone swat it! Hi guys! Well, here's a problem. This thing's an animatronic. I assume it's a Five Nights at Freddy's reject? Hmm, maybe I can turn this knob later on. Hot Pockets! Time's up! Robert confronts our heroes, threatening to kill Eloise. Ooh, things are getting edgy. And this is where the guys spill their guts out to this guy, which... Why would you do that? I mean, they confess that they're not real heroes, even though there's a bad guy threatening to kill someone. I mean, bad timing. There, Eloise, you happy? But then, Pa Grape looks up at the chandelier with the donkey on it, you know, the third thing from the blind guy's prophecy. The crab, adversity, devouring someone, and the donkey from above. Yeah, remember hearing that earlier, kids? Did you write it down? Didn't think so. About time someone knocked some sense into this movie's plot. Wow, way to ruin the mystique of Robert's appearance. So let's row, row, row your boat down the stairs and into the cistern. Oh, get them! <laughs> um. Every day, get them! Every day, get them! 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 Get no? Don't worry, I remember it so you don't have to. You know, this should be an intense chase scene. However, the bad guys suck at their ability to fire cannonballs. In fact, that shot should have obliterated our heroes. They're in range now, boys. Finish them. Uh, correction. They were in range this whole time. You just suck at aiming. But then God intervenes. Uh, no. King What's-His-Face is here. Yeah, the king doesn't have a name, by the way. He's just the king in the credits. So King Goody Two-Shoes is better aimed than Uncle Evil over here. And yes, a generic villain always goes down with his ship. Anyway, ceremony time. Here's a medal for not being lazy. Here's a medal for growing some balls. And here's a medal for, uh, wearing glasses in this movie. Okay, now, remember those plot points I mentioned earlier? The fact that the king leaves his children out in the open as Robert grows stronger? The fact that the help seeker doesn't send people home until they've completed their hero job? The fact that the help seeker blinks during the time when the king's daughter, the princess, is being kidnapped? And I made sure you had everything you needed to complete the task. When we were on the island, the boss said it was time to go home. That was a test. And now we have him saying that he called our guys into this adventure and that they wouldn't journey alone as long as they had the help seeker. And that the part where the help seeker blinked during the kidnapping scene was actually a test. A test that Paul Grape and Larry passed and not Mr. Lunt because he was still in the cave at the time. 
I've watched this movie several times already, and still, the king's explanation for all of this makes no sense, and it's stupid. I mean, yeah, he invented the help seeker, but it seems like he thought this whole thing through. Or maybe he didn't. I mean, he had to have known that his brother was out to kill his children. He had to have known that when the help seeker had blinked, it was at the exact same time of his daughter's kidnapping. So basically, you guys, you're telling me that this king is willing to gamble with his children's lives so that he could do what? Teach these three guys, these random strangers, how to be real heroes? And what's worse is that all of this feels staged now. Seeing that the king mentioned that his help is always with the heroes as they carry around the help seeker, a device that can travel through time to pick up these guys in the first place. And let's not forget, this is the 17th century that they're in. So if our boys go back to the present, then there will be changes in the future. But in a later scene, everything is the same, almost as if the boys had never left. That's not how time travel works. At least, I don't think. I mean, if you've seen Back to the Future, you would know that. Even check out the Family Guy parody of that. So again, this would have worked better as a story where some guys hitch a ride to another world or dimension. Not time travel. Speaking of hitching rides, guess who sneaks onto their boat as they go back to the present? Ah, it's the ending to Galaxy Quest. Oh no, they think Sir Frederick is me. How? You mean to tell me that this guy, a guy who's skilled in the mechanical arts, can't tell the difference between a grape and a gourd? Anyway, you know the drill. Our heroes manage to subdue the villain and send him back to his home planet. Notice how no cops were called as some tyrannical loser is wielding a dangerous weapon onto a public stage? So Mr. Nezer offers our heroes starring roles in the theater show, but they turn them down. Why? You have families and girlfriends to tend to. You guys need a job. So maybe that's why you guys decided to become the pirates who don't do anything. Because y'all rather cosplay as pirates than do anything to please your loved ones. I guarantee you this will all end in a bitter divorce and breakups. In this way, we'll have an excuse as to why they live on a ship in the Jonah movie. Anyway, music video. An okay song, not gonna lie. Oh look, it's Robert doing the robot. How original. Alright, that's a wrap. First off, I agree. And second of all, where were you this whole time, Bob? The movie's over. And that was the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. And let me tell you, this movie was all over the place. Alrighty, so those were my thoughts on the Pirates Who Do Something in a generic pile of whatever. They do something, okay? There were some good things in this movie, but most of it is a spaghetti of a mess. No wonder people like Jonah more than this movie. And you know I'd rather listen to Jonah complain and run around screaming like a madman. Yeah, I'd rather listen to that right now. Going to it's weird how I miss I miss Jonah. I miss watching Jonah <laughs> after watching this movie. I mean, where's that in this movie? We need Make Veggie Tales funny again. <laughs> I mean, come on. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a thanks on the video. And if you want to support the show, there is always my Patreon and becoming a channel member. Also, check out my Redbubble merch store. A lot of good stuff there. You could also follow me on TikTok, Instagram, DeviantArt, and all that shabamic. I'm sorry, I'm just so tired, like, after <laughs> putting together this review. The Larry Boy fanatic who doesn't do anything now because she reviewed Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. <laughs> Dang, that's a long name. Anyways, enough rambling. This has been your girl, Larry Boy Fanatic. 
the eyes and plunge your ears at the Larry Boy multiverse. And stay tuned for that plot holes video.